Hey, what's going on there? Welcome and congratulations for signing up. I'm right? making it here for wanting to learn these 10 effective ways that I use with my clients and that you can go and explore your competitors that are doing great to see. And you'll see that some of the things that I'm going to cover today is, some, is what they're doing as well. So 10 effective ways to attract more local customers to your small business in Solano County. If you're not in Solano County, that's fine, right? But this is where I'm at. I have a digital marketing agency here in the county helping uh, small local businesses, helping them to attract local customers. And so I want to go over some of the stuff that I do to perhaps something that you can take of value as well to apply to your own business. Now, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover today are, that it, are more related towards the retail restaurant industry. But some of those other steps you'll be able to take away from this or take from this and be able to apply to your own business. So some ideas will apply anywhere. And again, if you don't believe me, you can go and check your competitor, see what they're doing. And uh, you'll see, right, that uh, some of the concepts and steps and, 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 and things that we're going to cover today, you'll notice that they are also um, can be applied to other industries. Not all the steps are going to cover here. You'll need to go and implement it right away, right? But take something out of here, a uh, couple steps, things that you can get out of here. You can go and, and take some actions. I'm even going to go through some examples to see how you can perhaps go and take some actions because that's the key, right? The key over here is not just to sign up for any other information and, and just keep it to ourselves, but the key right here is to get one or two things out of here and go implement it uh, uh, right away as soon as you can and try to test it out right and see what kind of results can you get they make note of it does it did it make any did they make any changes for me and then ask yourself okay if it, if it, if, it's, if it's something was not effective what other can i tweak something from here to adapt it to my business and if you try those things, okay, let's go back and see what what else can we try, right? It's all about testing. And I know you everybody's busy, you are a busy business owner, but it's one or two things, right? Either you don't have the money and you need to make the time to make your marketing work because if your marketing is not working, how are you going to get your business in front of more customers? Obviously, if you are here in this training, it's because you're looking for ways to get in front of more customers, to get your business in front of more customers. If you, everything was good, you probably you definitely would have signed up um, to watch this video and get some ideas. So again, right, take some of these steps from here. You don't have to go and execute all of them. One or two things will be fine. Uh, tweak if something doesn't work. Tweak, think, think about it. See how you, a different approach you can uh, do. And if it doesn't work, what else can can you apply? Right. A lot of these things are. Um, something that should not cost a lot to begin with, but let's go ahead and get started. So, real quick, there are, as a business owner, right, the way we make money is very simple. We either sell products or provide services to customers and be able to of hopefully get paid enough that we can make a profit of it, right? Because, but one thing is that no matter how great our products or services are, um, if we don't have any customers, there we don't have a business. And that's why I think marketing is, is an important key within our business that we need to uh, put in place. Now, marketing can come in many different ways, right? It could come paid advertising, some organic, organic um, marketing, uh, flyers printed, right? There's so many ways how we can approach this. The key is that we can, that we need to put our business in front of enough customers to be able to make a profit out of it. So one of the things that why most businesses fail is not because they don't, people don't want their products or services, is because People don't even know your business exists, right? That could be one of the key factors why business fail. 
for many small businesses, marketing and advertising is a huge problem simply because it's time consuming to learn the skill, right? Just like any other skill, it could be time consuming to learn it. So hopefully this 10 simple yet effective way that we're gonna go over today is something that you can take away and, and, and implement into your own business. Number one uh, marketing strategy to apply is leveraging the word of mouth effect. Now this will not work if for some reason your business doesn't have a great product or services, right? So in order for this to work, definitely you'll need to be able to have something to offer to clients that want them. If, if the clients doesn't want it, the word of mouth effect is not gonna exist. But this is something that has been there for such a long time, right? Have a, have a customers that they can be impressed about your food, your product, your services, and then that customer will tell somebody else. When a customer is happy and satisfied with the product and services, it's just basically natural, a natural uh, tendency for us as humans to go and share our experience, right? We want to be heard. We want to make sure that we uh, um, uh, tell our family members or friends how great and awesome experience we have with a specific business uh, due to the product or services. A satisfied customer is one of the most effective marketing and advertising tool a small business can ever have. So number two. Free works like magic. Now, I know as a lot of uh, small business owners, we may, we may be constrained about giving away things away for free, right? So you gotta think about your price in your products, right? The, the, the what's the word I'm looking for? You definitely gotta know your cost, how much it costs you to do something, or how much profit you're making out of a product or services to be able to see, to identify if you are able to provide a service or product for free or something within your product or service for free. Or is there something outside of your product or services for free that you can, uh, that you can give away? Uh, the, is there a product or service that you can provide for free? You gotta think of different ways, right? Don't just approach free as, not knowing if you're actually making money or you're gonna lose a lot of money, right? Understand your numbers, understand your profit margins, and that will help you to um, get something for free. However, if you really know your custom, your lifetime customer value, this could help you because there are so many examples that we can go through in reference to many big companies or companies that will give away something for free, right? You have a 15 day, day free trial of something. Um, you have a, um, uh, a, a product that you give away for free because you know that in essence, the life, the, the customer lifetime value, you will end up making a profit. So for example, if you give away a, a meal for free, that customer that, that that becomes a customer for life, um, or at least you know that your customers are are uh, lifetime value. They they basically stay with you for about five years, let's say on average, and within the five years, let's say they you make five thousand, right? So what a ten dollars free meal, um, is it, basically invaluable. It a, a ten dollars free meal is basically a high ROI that you uh, a return on investment that you can have if you give away a meal and turn the customer into a loyal customer that continues to, to come back uh, year after year that after you know an average you know they stay with you for five years and that makes you about five thousand um, dollars uh, during that time right about a thousand dollars every year um, that's basically a great return on your investment right you spend then ten dollars to get five thousand back those numbers are great. Obviously, there's all that's just I'm just simplifying this simplifying this example because I mean there's a lot of other stuff that make that we're not taking into consideration. But that's just to give you a a, a good picture. Uh, for example, um, obviously, there may be uh, you we see all the time with software tools, right? Software tools that 
they have a lifetime a customer lifetime value of three years, right? They say a customer uh, you have given to try your product for fifteen days, and then they say for uh, uh, three years paying you every month, I don't know, twenty bucks, um, uh, sixty bucks, however your subscription is. Obviously, you end up paying, you ended up gaining way more than what you could have lost in this first 15 days for, for them to try it for free. Um, other stuff that you've seen do, like in the restaurant industry, you, you buy two, you get one for free, right? That's a great way to get customers into the door and to bring a friend. And obviously, hopefully, bring, making that friend, a, uh, that friend a customer loyal as well. And so, um, free is always great because there's no risk to the, the, to the client. But you can also twist this in a way that could actually benefit you in the long way, right? We already talked about uh, something given away for free that likes it to the customer, that the customer likes it, your product or services, and then to turn into the customers. But also, we can go way beyond that, right? Uh, to the point to um, be able to acquire reviews, right? Okay, we give you this for free, but would you please give us your honest opinion? And that continues to help us build a reputation online, right? That um, and we know nowadays that a lot of people, one of the things that they do, I think is 78% rely on, will trust a re online review as much as uh, what a friend or family suggestion uh, means to them. So, Again, the free part, we can actually turn it into a, either a bigger return on investment, right? From turning into loyal customers. Number two, from asking for the feedback on a product or service and be able to build up our reputation, right? Especially if we're just starting or we don't have a big reputation on, uh, uh, we haven't been in the market for a long time. Uh, and number three, um, we can gather data. Right, that data is so important nowadays for customers. We can actually, we, we, we can do some type of offer promotions that, hey, you join to receive or, or, or communications, you join our club or VIP club or whatever you want to call it. And by giving us your information, right, your name, your email, your phone number, uh, your birthday, if, if you can do, if you can take advantage of a birthday by sending special offers to, be to your customer just on the birthday. All this information, it's, it's a valuable asset to your business because uh, that's what helps you turn loyal, turn customers into loyal customers that continue to come back. Um, you, it helps you to stay on top of mind of your client, right? Uh, because that now creates, inf now for you creates a, a way to either send in, stay in contact with them through emails through phone numbers by via text or calling them, um, that data can be gathered and put it into advertising tools, right? Like Facebook or Google, and that that when you put that data into those tools, that uh, Facebook will know who your clients are and continue to stay in front of them through advertising, right? There's so many ways that you can uh, implement that, uh, use that data, so. Again, free doesn't needs to be needs to always mean free. Your business can make gain out of it, a profit, especially in the long um, term. And more than likely, I would like to address the to the business owners that would rather to have a long term business, right? To have a long term client, not just one of those clients that are one time type of deal, right? Um, I want to address this more to the cost, to the business owners that uh, appreciate and value um, having a a a a long term client than just mono, than just a one and done deal. So free, just to recap real quick, you can use it to earn a loyal customer that will continue to come back month after month. You can use it to. Um, Increase the data of your business, right? About your customers. Uh, and number three, you can you can use it to increase the reputation of your business by asking for reviews. So free could be a great way to go. And if you just go your industry, see what kind of free offers you have, right? So for example, free restaurant offers. 
you can Google something like that. You can go check up your local magazines, your, see here as an article about 14 restaurants where you can get free food for now, right now. Uh, you can look, check out your local magazines, see what sort of offers they have going on. You can check up your local newspaper, see what kind of offer they have going on, right? There's so many ideas that um, you can implement. Number three, offer discounts and deals. So just like providing free stuff, discounts are a great way to uh, put a marketing strategy to work, right? It's it's very creative and low low cost to attract to a new customer. Very low. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a it's a way to for the customers to come and try your product and services at the very low risk from them, right? People often see discounts and deal as huge opportunities to save money and enjoy a product or services for a whole lot less. Now, one thing I wanted to go about offers and discounts. Right, we already talked about free. How can you um, leverage free to to gain more out of it, right? Even though you may it may seem that you may lose in, a, a, in the in the front, but if you get your numbers right, right, you you understand that you can gain a lot more in the back. Uh, with offers and discounts, it's the same thing, right? You have to know your numbers. Um, you have to know how long a customer stays with you so that you can understand when actually you're going to be profitable from a customer, right? So, and we already gave you this example, right? If, if, if I give three months a 50% discount, but that person stays for three years, right? Even though we may lose a little bit on the three months, um, we're going to make up our money for those three months within a year, let's say, of that customer staying with us, right? And then after a year, it, uh, the two other years, we are profitable from that customer. So we have to understand those numbers. Um, and and, and a, a hot deal, a discount are a great way, I, again, for that customers to come and try us out at a loss risk barrier for them. And people like discounts. Now, one thing that we could implement uh, to make it this more appealing is to explain why. Why the deal, right? You can implement marketing strategy from telling the story of how you come up with this deal. And I learned this from uh, uh, somebody that owns a restaurant, very successful at marketing and, and marketing other restaurants. Um, how you can implement stories into how you come up with the deal. You can say that, um, you know, we, we asked for feedback and one of our customers um, was the one that gave us this great idea that customers feel great and, and obviously because they're being featured, they're being mentioned. So you give an explanation uh, of the story of why this deal. Other explanation that can be great is, okay, you know, we appreciate your support as a loyal customer and because of that, we would like to be able to offer this discount deal so you can invite other clients and help us continue to grow our business, right? Uh, we're looking to get 10 more new clients this month or 20 more new clients this month or customers. And so you're giving there an explanation of why um, to those customers that love you and, and uh, 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 simply rave about your products and services. They want to do anything for you to be successful because they love to continue to get your products and services that they're going to go and help, right? They're going to they're gonna feel a part that, uh, that they do with something um, worth it and, and to help you, right, that you give an explanation. It's not just a flash, hey, the, here is uh, 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 the sale that we got going on, but actually they feel attached when you can provide the why. Okay, we have this deal because we're looking to get more customer, and as you, as one of you, as we look, uh, and you as a lawyer customer can help us by um, bringing a new uh, a friend or family, right, uh, that haven't been here, and here we can give you uh, this offer to buy one, get one free, or buy two, get, get one free, etc. to uh, incentivize you, right? And, and at the same time, you'll be helping us. So there, there are ways that this can be done by not be seen as just pushy, spammy, right? Um, uh, but actually something that can be, that, that people can feel connected to your, to your business. All right, so number four, start with a contest. Everybody loves to win something. It's not just always about the prize, but just about feeling that 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 feeling of being able to accomplish something and being uh, being able to beat somebody and be able to be the winner, 
right? It could be ego, it could, I don't know, call it anything way, you, anything you want to call it. Um, but we feel good when we win something. Um, for example, I posted something over here. Let's say you are in the wedding business and you sell wedding gowns, bridal access, and other stuff to young people who are planning a wedding. Let's also say you will start an interesting contest and the prize includes a designer wedding dress or fully sponsored honeymoon trip to a local resort. To enter for this contest, all the couples will have to submit a romantic poem about how they met each other. So can you see the power on this? If we, if obviously they win a big prize, if it, it's enough incentive for people to, number one, they're already marrying, right? They're already getting in a wedding. So this is perfect audience. And obviously they're going to need a honeymoon, right? Or something that you can offer them. And submitting a romantic poem will be a no-brainer for those that want to win. Um, and, and what you can gather from this is a lot of information about your customers, right? Uh, obviously, you get the data again. You can use it as a case study. And, and it's a great way to go viral as, as well in your local market. You do not need much money behind if you, if you don't have a big audience to get to, to for this to go uh, viral in your local market, right? Let's say you have a restaurant and you give it away a $50 gift certificate to whoever uh, do something, right? Make, make sure to always get them do something, right? To make sure that they, 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 are, they, they work a little bit for that. Obviously, you don't want to make them work too hard. If you making them work hard, the pride needs to be uh, uh, big, incentive enough to make them work hard, right? So you just got to keep that in mind. The harder you make them work, the 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 higher your, your price has to be, the more incentive has to be in the price for me to be able to motivate me to go and do that. But it's a great way for your business to create a buzz, to become viral, um, because imagine if you put on social media something like, you know, we're giving away a fifty dollar gift certificate to our business, or a fifty dollars uh, shopping spree, whatever t business you have that can that can make sense to this, right? Um, and you can tell stuff like, hey, by the way, you know, um, tag three friends in order for you to win, and also like us, right? And also send us your content information. So those are great ways to uh, get, generate leads and, and, and get people to know about you, right? Because those people are tying in their friends. And so this, their friends are becoming aware of your existence, even in case you didn't. So it creates a buzz. It creates a great way to for you to uh, uh, create a presence uh, in your local area. All right. So number five, do you have a website yet? So this could be seen as, as a no-brainer. However, you might be even you asking yourself, well, I already have, or, or it might not be a no-brainer for you, right? It might be something that you may be already telling to yourself or, or saying, Leo, I, I have Yelp, I don't need this, or I have a Facebook business page, or I have a Google business profile page, right? I, I don't need a website. Um, and, and yet, I, I, I think, in my opinion, it should be a no-brainer, right? But uh, some people may be already pushing about this. But the way you should see this is that your website is something that you control, that you can control. Um, if on the, any of these other platforms, a like Yelp page or Facebook page, you do not own those, right? You just basically... Uh, getting this free service from Facebook or Yelp or Google, whoever you decide to set up a profile, that at any time that can be taken away from you, okay? Uh, a website is something that you control. It's an asset to your business. So if you have the, if you have the capacity, the budget, you could have something, right? Uh, nowadays, it doesn't take much, yes, you have to keep in mind that if you don't have a big budget, you have to understand that all your website is doing is more of an informational, right? But if you're at the point that you want your website to be functional, to be something that is actually applicable, not 
I'm not talking about looking pretty, right? Looking pretty doesn't give you customer, but actually having a website that is practical and functional, something that uh, can generate customers, that actually can cost you some money, right? Uh, because it's a, it can be a continu continuous investment and um, there's some other factors around it, but it doesn't have to cost you money. There's ways that you can you can be cost effective and yet still be able to build a website that uh, won't hurt your bank account, especially if you're still starting phase or you haven't um, put a budget aside for your website. There's so many ways you can go about even building a free website, right? You, can, you still need to uh, put time into it and learn in the platform, yet the website is, is free. However, I will recommend you not to go with, if you go to through this website, I will recommend you to pay five, 10 bucks a month, 15, however much this they charge to put a, what is called a custom domain to your website, right? Because a lot of these platforms that they provide to give you a free website, they may have something else attached to it. So for example, let's say your website name is um, uh, Joe's Burger, uh, right, Joe's Burger. Let's say that's your, your website name um, or, or your business name. Well, if you grab something like Wix, right? Wix, for example, they give you something for free, one of the plans. But the, what happens is they, uh, they, they, the free version, what it's gonna do is gonna put something like Joe's Burger that wix.com and that's not something that is very professional right it's not something that is is not gonna be worth it to your business to just not be able to pay that extra five ten bucks a month or in some platforms like google my business they give you the website for free and all you have to do is connect it for free your what you're and all you have to do to is pay the domain right it is worth it to do it because again, you are starting to build the reputation of your business, you're starting to build the brand of your business uh, by avoiding doing something like putting Joe's Burger that wix.com or just Joe's Burger or squarespace.com forward slash forward slash Joe's Burger, right? There's some other company that is in your business making your business, your website name clunky or your website address clunky and, and not very branded. And, and so again, that's why uh, it's great to if you actually go and take the time to invest into not just making the website making it functional but also making it custom domain something that has the name of the business that you want the actual name of, of how you want your website to be uh, the, the address for it number six get listed on popular local directories so in the old days we used to have yellow pages right it used to be the big book that uh, everybody will be listed there, especially business wanted to be listed there because that was the, one of the only ways for people to know about us, right? Either you either drive around your neighborhood, either you have family or friends, family members or friends to tell you about a specific business. Um, other than that, it will be very hard, difficult to find you, right? You perhaps can mail flyers um, uh, or you could be you can have your business listed on these books where your information will be there and that's how people will find out that uh, about the services that you provide and then at that point they can call you and, and learn more about it or they can actually drive because they will be able to know your information that was so that was in the old days the yellow pages uh now thanks to the internet a small you as a small business owners can be listed in many several uh yellow pages like type of directories that are online most of them are free yeah it takes some time to go and set up and, and manage them right uh, most of them are free. Why waste opportunity? Why waste the opportunity to be to have free billboards out there for your business? And these websites, if you are very strategic, right, on which websites you directories you select, uh, they have a great reputation, right? They have a great reputation factor, so people trust them. Like Yelp, for example, or Facebook or Google, right? Everybody knows those websites, and everybody trusts them. So if your business is listing them there. People are putting reviews about your business. Uh, then obviously it seems to be your business a little bit more legit because people are actually talking about it, right? Uh, they can get information about it. Um, Yelp, uh, obviously, is a reputable website um, that has your business listed, and you're taking the time as a business owner to go and, and set up and build the profile. So uh, take advantage of this. One thing I would recommend is to uh, find a way to 
get direct listed in directories that make sense to your business and industry, right? So, for example, you as a mm, let's say as a burger place may not want to be listed on on Angel's List, for example, right? Angel's List is mostly for businesses that provide services, your contractors, your electricians, um, right? Your pest controls. Or for example, Foursquare. Foursquare, it's more towards the hospitality industry and 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 food industry, restaurant, right? So again, as a pest control, it might not make it may not make sense for you to be in four in, in Foursquare. Um, one free resource resource I would recommend to you will be this one called Yspark.ca. And you can go to the resource section. And on the resource section, try to find the top local citations by category, I believe it's called. So here, best citation sources by category. And then you have to choose the country where you are, right? Let's say United States. And then you'll see you can click on you can check on the drop down menu to choose your your in the category of your industry. Uh, you can actually explore, right, the other categories they have listed here. So advertising, accounting, are you an accountant? Are you an agric agricultural services? Are you an architect, apartment, um, auto repair shops, attorney, right? And auto repair shops, you can see, okay, what sort of uh, directory is this website is recommending for me as, an, as a business owner for a auto repair shop? And we can see here that, okay, Yelp, it seems to be make make a lot of sense for auto repair shops because there are 2,719 uh, businesses or time that a business owner had put this category in it. Or there's uh, yellow pages, right? There's uh, 1,700, uh, 1,709 times that this, um, that this category appears in this site. Uh, and so you get to see, right? You get to see the numbers um, that that these websites have listed for a specific category in the industry and that obviously will help you to understand what are the categories that could be important to your business. That Now, this is just a free resource. Uh, other stuff I will recommend you is to uh, check out your competitors, right? So if you know any top business owner within your industry, it doesn't have to be your same city, same state, or even same country, right? Research what some, some competitors you admire that are in, in your industry and see what what is what are what are they doing, right? So for example, if I Google dentist in Sacramento, if I know how to spell dentist Sacramento, I'll get a list of different dentists, right, within the Sacramento area. And this one seems to be really great, right? For great reviews. Um we can see other ones, Dentist Sacramento, these are advertising, new patients. So if you know your industry, you know your competitors, you know who's doing great, uh, let's say I want to perhaps see what Milton Dental is doing, right? So what I can do is go to Google, grab the name, and perhaps put the city. And we know this is their business because we have the little Google profile over here. So what we can see over here, we can see that they are listed on, so there's a lot of pages they have. The first three options are there for the business page. We can see they are on Yelp. We can see they are on Facebook. We can see they are on Ditto Maso Dental. Uh, MapQuest. So that gives you an idea, right, what your competitors are doing as well. So that's two free resources on, uh, that I gave you now. Um, so one of the actions from this, it will be, right, find out what directories are important to your area and to your industry. And uh, either you can use the, the resources that I gave you, yeah, right, the whitespark.ca, or simple Google the information about your top competitors and, and put their name and see what sort of websites they're there they have the business listed. Right? You may go you might need to go to the other pages. You can see they're on Twitter, you can see they're on Sack Magazine, you can see they're in Yellow Pages, and I can see they have they're on YouTube, Glassdoor, etc. Right. All right, so number seven, are you on social media? 
So social media is changing the way businesses is done in today's world. There are now several social media platforms and Facebook leads the social media platforms with 2.38 billion monthly active users. So I don't there are 2.38 billion monthly active users. Monthly active users meaning every month they are using it, right? 2.38 8 billion people are using Facebook every month. It means once a month, every day, however many days, right? But at least once a month, 2.38 people, billion people will go into Facebook and, and use it. And this is according to stats I got from this website, Sephoria.com, so you can go and check it out. Uh, popular social media networks like Facebook are some of the top places where your potential customers hang out, and it makes perfect sense that you register your business. On Facebook too so again know your market right know where your 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 market likes to hang out do they like to be on Instagram do they like to be on Facebook do they like to do they like to be on, on LinkedIn right you have to know that data in that way because social media may could, could cost you time and effort and money right time effort and money so you have to prioritize especially if you have limited time and money um, and resources, you have to prioritize where to put your business on, um, uh, what social media to use, and a great way to know is obviously asking your customers or knowing your customers, or something big to do is you know uh, have a website that can tell you where your customers are coming from. You know what social media they're mostly finding you or coming to your place. Something that I like to use is Google Analytics. It's a free tool from Google that you can sign up for free. And what happens is there's a little uh, option in there that can give you traffic. So let's see, traffic sources. So let's see if I can find an image uh, and help you understand what sort of that looks like, okay? So let's see if this image helps. So this is a green screenshot right here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it tells us sort of what, uh, it tells us over here on the left side, this is where you can go to the traffic source area. And this looks a little bit outdated platform dashboard, but it's, it, you, you still make uh, sense of it, right? You find a section for traffic sources, and then that tells you, okay, what uh, is working, what's giving you the most traffic, right? So in this instance, it's safe that they getting a lot of traffic from referring sites, and that that uh, something where that we can go about later, but one of those, resource uh one of the those traffic sources it, it will provide you information about the uh, the social media and what social media platforms are actually bringing you the most traffic to your website um and one thing that needs to happen in order for this to work is that you need to install a code that is free it doesn't require a lot of technical knowledge however it does require that somebody do it and physically put it on your website um so this, again, numbers don't lie, know your numbers. Uh, having a tool like this that is free will help you understand what's working, right? Obviously, it will need time to uh, the for the analytics to gather numbers and data to be able to provide to you. But um, this, again, this is a great asset too that you understand your numbers and, and understand what's working, what social media is actually bringing, in, uh, bringing um, people to my website and that's going to help you understand where to concentrate your effort, energy, and money into what social media, right? And get rid of uh, other social media that may not be helpful at all because your customers don't use it at all, uh, etc. Other free source out there is, um, anyway, yeah, let's continue that. Let's do that. Let's just give it a dive. I don't want to confuse you too much, but um, uh, know your data, right? What social media people are using to find you. Uh, be on social media is again it's like having a free billboard just like uh, online directories because uh, you have you can put information about your business um, it increases the 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 factor of being on the top search results where people are looking for you because again it feeds information to websites like Google to help them understand okay Facebook LinkedIn Twitter Instagram all this website are uh, mentioning this business and it has similar information to what I have so this must be 
a good business to present to the people that are searching about that business or about the products or services that right um so all that helps google understand or and similar websites to that that people use is to go find stuff to understand what your business is about uh what your business do uh, what's the name of your business uh, just helping you reinforce the information about your business and help them to show perhaps in the uh, top rank on top of the pages when people are looking for something all this to be in the first page so leverage social media but understand what social media platforms are useful for your business all right so online advertising is the way to go and this is one of the key factors that i use for my business for for my clients and for my own business uh, for different several reasons right number one because it helps us to very fast be get in front of our local market in front of our ideal market right it's basically like having an automated system to be in front of us obviously we should not take away all the other important marketing strategies like flyers magazines networking right uh calling texting however advertising is although it's an investment right it's something that could help massively scale the business and because it would allow you to automate that process to acquire new customers when it's done right it's a somebody that can it could be a salesperson for you 24 7 right while you can be doing some other areas right you can perhaps be concentrating on the local networking if that's also a big fact part a big important part of the of your business right to create new customers to continue to market your business be in front of more customers possible customers you can focus on um again other marketing areas of your business or other areas that your business may need attention right so if you have a a machine that is working for you 24 7 you don't have to pay them overtime or benefits or anything like that to go and acquire new clients if all that is working for you in the back end you can have time to do other stuff is there any other areas you want to grow in your business is there any other areas that require focus on your business uh, or are you looking just simply to step back a little bit from your business because you may have something going on with the family you may have a trip plan with the family or simply you just want to be able to spend more time with your family right um, this is one of the things why advertising is important to do it it allows us to basically uh, be in front of our clients in an automated way to so that we don't have to spend too much time into the marketing part um, or be able to reach people a lot more faster but understand right that it has to be done right you have to understand that you have to target the right people you have to understand that you actually have to be making money right um, that you actually have to be profitable so it's good to know your numbers you have to understand how much you can actually afford um, and that you know it will not always work but it's good to always be testing and having somebody to help you is the key right there And number nine, reviews, right? Reviews are the keys. And I touch a little bit of this on, on number two, I believe, right? So getting reviews of your local business, especially on Google, Yelp, Facebook, and all those is going to help ranking and it will encourage others to visit your business. People do read reviews online, especially for service type businesses. And the higher the ticket price is in regards to your service or product, the more time people will spend reviewing and reading reviews and researching right because obviously the more money we have to pay obviously the more we have to think about it right we know we have to do it but we have to take some time to actually make sure that we are doing the right investments could be a house remodeling right remodeling the kitchen remodeling a room remodeling something within a house a new furniture a new car right um, a new home definitely big time research so all those are uh, things that uh, we should take into consideration and we need to understand that uh, our customers what's their buying buying cycle of our customers should they spend a lot of time researching 
in order to become a customer, right? We have to understand all that. And that was going to help us to understand how much of an effort we need to put into building a reputation on reviews. Um, and also how much, how much we, it will help us understand the importance of encouraging reviews, right? We can uh, encourage by offering prices. We can encourage them by simply ask them. We can ask them in person. The moment they get a great experience from us, that's the best moment to ask, right? Because obviously they are so happy and satisfied about our business that it just makes sense to ask, right? And would you, by the way, would you please provide us feedback? It will help us to, uh, it will help us to get the voice out, so to speak, right? It will help us to get your uh, input into making sure that we continue doing the right by our customers, right? So all that's information that we can leverage. Um, and also respond to reviews, right? It will help you to interact with your customer. It will, it will help your customer feel as they can actually connect with you because you're responding. If you don't respond to reviews, customers will feel that it's not really worth it to put reviews because nobody pay attention. It's not really, um, it doesn't really feel like we can connect with the business 